We've recently looked at how you can take a factored form, something like this, and tell where the x-intercepts are of the graph. So between the x-intercepts and the graph, or the factored form and the x-intercepts, you change the sign. And that's essentially because when you're finding your x-intercepts, you're finding where the y value is zero. Right, so if we look at this equation, our y values being zero would be here. Um, so what I can do is there's this property called the zero product property. In order to multiply to zero, one of these has to be zero. So I set each one of those equal to zero and I solve. So here to get x by itself, I would subtract three. Here to get x by itself, I would add four. So we get the x-intercepts of negative 3 and 4. Um, now, our axis of symmetry, it, or our vertex, x value of vertex, is halfway between these two values. So you can find, um, either using math, so you do negative 3 plus 4 cut in half, um, and that will tell you halfway in between, or you can use counting. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so we went a total of seven, so half of seven is three and a half, so one, two, three and a half, so my vertex would be at the x value of a half. If we finish solving the math, we get negative three plus four is one, over two is a half. So this is our axis of symmetry. Okay, And then if we wanted to find what our y value of the vertex is, we're gonna plug that into here. So we can do a half plus three, times by a half minus four. Now, if you're not great with uh, fractions, you're welcome to use your calculator. So if you do a half plus three, oh, I need parentheses. A half plus three, close my parentheses. I'd like to use 0.5 when I put it in a calculator because it's slightly shorter to put in. And then a half minus four. then that gives us negative 12.25, which you could also write as a fraction of negative 49 fourths. Okay. So this gives us negative 49 fourths, which is negative 12.25. Oops. Okay. So our vertex is at a half, negative 12.25. So I'm gonna go by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So then our vertex is about here, right? And we can make a nice little picture that goes like this. I also know because this A value is positive that it's gonna open up. We could also find what the Y intercept is by plugging in zero. So if I plug in zero for X, I get zero plus three times zero minus four equals three times negative four, which is negative 12 which notice my y-intercept here is negative 12. Okay. Now, we have a scenario that we haven't looked at. What if I give you one where it factors to something like 2x plus 1 and 3x plus, oh, no, let's do minus, 3x minus 7. Okay. Well, um, when we're solving this, if we go back to our way where we have it set equal to zero, we have this set equal to zero, so we can still set each set of parentheses equal to zero. So 2x plus 1 equals zero, and 3x minus 7 equals zero. Okay. When we solve this one, we have to subtract the one first. So I get 2x equals negative 1. Then I'm going to undo timesing by 2 by dividing... So I get x equals negative a half. Here, I'm going to add the seven first. So then I get three x equals seven, and then I need to undo timesing by three. So I'm gonna divide by three. So we get x equals seven thirds. So if we look for a pattern from our parentheses to our x-intercepts, notice this sign changed to get to a negative one, and then we divide by this number 
change this sign, divide by this number. So we still have a shortcut that we can take. Notice that shortcut works for this one as well. Change this sign, which is negative three, divide by the unsaid one, but negative three divided by one is still negative three. Change this sign, positive four, divide by the one is positive four. So we have this pattern where you can change this sign, divide by this, to shortcut finding your x-intercepts when it's in factored form. Okay. So if we look at our x-intercepts here, we have x is negative a half, and then seven thirds, three goes into seven once, uh, sorry, twice, and then you have one left over. So we have one, two, three, so two and a third is about there. Okay. Now this is where it's nice, where we can find the axis of symmetry using math instead of counting because we've got partial parts. So we're going to do negative a half plus two and a third, and we cut that amount in half, and that will tell us where our vertex is. So we can go to our calculator, and we can do negative a half, and I have to hit over to get out of the fraction, plus two and a third, yes, two and a third, two and one, oh nope, that's not gonna do it, plus two plus one third, or I could switch two and a third to a fraction. If I switch two and a third to a fraction, remember two and one third is really three times two, which is six plus one, which is seven. So you could say seven thirds. And so notice here we've got 1.833 if I show you the 7 thirds. It's the 1.833 still. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit enter and then divide by 2 because I forgot to put parentheses or you can go back and fix your parentheses. So I'm going to take my answer and divide by 2 so that gives us 0 0.9167 or you could say 11 twelfths. So 0 0.96 or 11 twelfths, so really close to one. So right, this is our axis of symmetry here, okay? So if I want to find the x value, or sorry, if we have the x value of the vertex, that's the 11 twelfths, I can plug that into here to find our y value of the vertex. So we're gonna do two times 11 twelfths plus one, and then three times 11 twelfths minus 7. Okay. Now you can still do this in a calculator, but I want to help remind you about fractions. Remember when we're multiplying fractions, you can multiply straight across, but you can also cancel before multiplying straight across. So the 2 and the 12 have a common factor. So now we can multiply uh, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 12 6 times. So we can multiply 1 times 11 is 11, and then 1 times 6 is 6 plus 1, Remember that one is really the same thing as six sixths. So that would give us 17 sixths. Here, um, three and 12 have a common factor of three. Three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times. So we do one times 11 is 11 and one times four is four. So we get 11 fourths minus seven. Remember that seven, if we get a common denominator, um, this is really over one, so we need a common denominator of four. So to go from one to four, we have to multiply the top by four, or we multiplied by four on the bottom, so I have to multiply the top by four as well. So this would be minus 28. So if we do 11 minus 28, that gives us negative 17 sixths, right? And then we can multiply straight across. So we can do 17 times 17, which gives us 289. Oops, it'll be negative 289 because one of them's negative. And then six times six is 36. Okay. So, and if we want to figure out what number that is, we would do 289, oops, 289 divided by 36, which gives us 8.03, and it'll be negative. Okay. Now, you could do it entirely in the calculator. So we could do, I'll need parentheses, uh, two times 11 ha, twelfths, just kidding. Get out, close the parentheses, and then plus one, I think. 
Yes. Close my parenthesis and then three times 11 twelfths. Get out of the fraction, close my parenthesis and then minus seven. Yes, minus seven like that. Oh, whoops, I did one too many parentheses. I had one extra parenthesis here, which gave us a different answer. So I need to do subtract seven and then close my parentheses. If I had this extra parentheses right here where the cursor is, um, then I would say you're multiplying the first two things and then subtracting seven, which doesn't give us the same answer. So 11 twelves, I did something wrong somewhere x plus one. Oh, I know. Here we go. I grabbed six from this denominator, not the four. So let's try that again. So this will give us 17 fourths, so we still get the negative 289, but over 24 instead. So now if I do 289 divided by 24, then we get the same thing. Oh, and I forgot my negative. So then we get the same answer. So negative 12.04. Sorry about that. Okay. So then our x-intercept, or our, not x-intercept, so our vertex is at 11 twelfths, negative 289 twenty fourths, or you could have the 0.96, negative 12.04, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, I'm going by twos again, since I'm going by twos I have to mark on my graph that there's twos, so that was 12 a little, so right here. And then we get that picture here. We can also still find our y-intercept. If I find our y-intercept, we're gonna plug in zero. So two times zero plus one times three times zero minus seven. So that gives us zero plus one, which is one. Three times zero, zero minus seven, which gives us negative seven. So I get negative seven. So I should have done my y-intercept before I graphed. So two, four, six, seven, so I was pretty close. So right here is where it should hit. Okay. Um, now remember for your y-intercept that your shortcut is that you can just multiply these two things because these will always go to zero regardless of what you're multiplying by. So I can do one times negative seven is negative seven. So that's what we wanted to add for learning today is how to use the factored form with things that aren't just, um, that give you um, things that aren't just whole numbers.